Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my physiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the blood and the immune system. Today, we're starting a new series in physiology, gastrointestinal physiology. The land of digestion, the land of absorption, the story of enzymes, the story of hormones. If you want to get the most out of my GI physiology, please watch my GI biology in the biology playlist before these ones. Let's get started. This is my physiology playlist. Try to watch these videos in order. No pain, no gain, no digestion, no absorption. Digestion is to break down macromolecules into micromolecules. These micromolecules are small enough so that you can absorb them to the bloodstream, i.e. the portal venous system, which will take it to the liver. The liver will metabolize what you ate and then put it in the hepatic veins, send it to the inferior vena cava, to the heart. Now you have doozy nutrients. You can send these nutrients with oxygen in arterial blood supply everywhere. As for the waste, you can send it to the kidney. If you were not digested and not absorbed, you will end up in the stool. Look at the left side of the heart. I pump oxygenated blood that has oxygen and nutrients. Pause and review. After you ate the sandwich, it's gonna go to your gut. Your gut will break it down, called digestion. Then we send it to the portal venous system, and this is called absorption. You are able to absorb it big time because you have villi and microvilli, which increase the surface area for absorption in your intestines. What's the building unit of the body? It's the cell. Group of cells make tissue. Group of tissues make organ. Group of organs make systems. You have four types of tissue in the body, epithelium, connective muscle, and nerve. Epithelium lines your body cavity. So on the inside of the stomach, there is epithelium. On the inside of your vessels, there is epithelium. We call it endothelium. This epithelium stands atop a basement membrane. Pause and review. Underneath this lovely epithelium in the stomach, there is connective tissue. Under the connective tissue, there is muscle tissue, specifically smooth muscles. Under the muscle layer, there is another connective tissue. So let's call them names. Mucosa, submucosa, musculosa, and serosa. When it's covered with peritoneum, we call it serosa. When it's not covered, we call it adventitia. So serosa is a subtype of adventitia. So now you have epithelium, you have connective tissue, you have muscle tissue. Where are the nerve fibers? The nerve fibers are here. We have a submucosal plexus in the submucosa, and we have myenteric plexus in the musculosa, exactly between the inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal muscle layer. Most of the epithelium in your stomach and intestine is columnar. Why does it have to be columnar? Because it has to be tall to have enough space to store the secretory granules in order to secrete. If a cell needs to secrete, it better be big. Versus the squamous flat one, it cannot secrete anything. There is no space inside to store the secretions. The epithelium that lines your gut is of endodermal origin. The muscles underneath it, mesodermal origin. The nerve fibers, ectodermal. Your gut has what kind of muscles? Smooth muscles, which means involuntary and non-striated. Involuntary, non-striated, non-branching, uninucleated, autonomic, not somatic nervous system. Do they have autonomy? Yes, it's called the enteric nervous system, which means the gut has its own nervous system, so to speak. Even if you cut the vagus and cut the sympathetic fibers, the gut can still work. Thank you, enteric nervous system. Do they have troponins? No, they have calmodulin instead. Calmodulin. It's a protein that modulates calcium. Do they have gap junction? Yes, they do. We call them nexus. What's the purpose of the gap junction? It allows one nerve fiber to supply many muscle fibers because the muscle fibers communicate with one another. There is a gap between them, gap junction known as nexus, so that all of these fibers can contract together as a singular unit known as syncytium from synchrony. Just like how you synchronize your files onto Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. Smooth muscles, no sarcomere, no striations, no branches, involuntary, no troponin, no T-tubule, no sarcoplasmic reticulum. Instead, we have a robust calcium calmodulin system, which results in contraction of smooth muscles or relaxation, of course. We have dense bodies. We have fewer sodium channels, but we have more calcium channels. 
That's why the spike potential of the gut, which we'll talk about later, is caused by calcium influx mainly. If you want your smooth muscle to relax, take the phosphate away from the myosin light chain, i.e. you need a phosphatase to dephosphorylate it. One way to activate the phosphatase and remove the phosphate is by nitric oxide, which activates guanylate cyclase, which converts GTP into cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP will activate protein kinase G, which will activate phosphatase, which will remove the phosphate from the myosin light chain. Now the myosin light chain is without phosphate, i.e. inactive, i.e. relaxed. If you want your smooth muscle to contract, give it a phosphate. If you want it to relax, remove the phosphate. How do I give it a phosphate? You need a kinase. Thank you, calcium calmodulin, for stimulating the kinase. If you want it to relax, give it a phosphatase to remove the phosphate. Thank you, nitric oxide, guanylate cyclase, arginine, GTP, cyclic GMP, protein kinase G for stimulating the phosphatase. Put differently, phosphorylation will give you contraction, dephosphorylation will give you relaxation. Whether we're talking about the wall of your gut or the wall of your blood vessels, because they also have smooth muscles. Do you know what these medications have in common? All of them are trying to relax your smooth muscles. Quick review of the nervous system. Please refer to previous videos. Nervous system is central versus peripheral. Central, brain and spinal cord. Peripheral, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. In the spinal cord, how many segments do we have? 31, eight are cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, one coccygeal. Do we have a difference between somatic and autonomic nervous system? Sure, somatic supplies skeletal muscle, but autonomic supplies cardiac smooth muscles and exocrine or endocrine glands. In other words, somatic is voluntary, autonomic is involuntary. Somatic fibers, like those who go to your biceps muscle, do not need any ganglia. However, autonomic nerves need ganglia. The ganglion will divide the nerve into preganglionic and postganglionic. What neurotransmitters do we need? If you are sympathetic, you will work with norepinephrine in your postganglionic fibers, but if you are parasympathetic, you will work with acetylcholine in your postganglionic fibers. If I am autonomic, like those fibers going to your gut, where should I start? Lateral horn cell of the spinal cord. Do you remember my videos on the action potential? During rest, the inside of the membrane is negative. If you want to activate it, you need to flip it from negative to positive on the inside. That's why when sodium enters, you get depolarization, which means activation. When chloride enters, oh, it's a negative entering, you get the opposite, inactivation or hyperpolarization. If potassium leaves, let's think about that. When the positive leaves, the inside will become more negative. So I am inactivated or hyperpolarized. Is your heart autonomous? Yes, indeed, it has its own sinoatrial node. So even if I cut those nerves that are coming to the heart, the heart can still pump by the SA node. Similarly, your gut has its own autonomy, called the enteric nervous system, especially the interstitial cells of Cajal, which are considered the pacemaker of your gut. The enteric nervous system is made of my enteric plexus for motility and submucosal plexus for secretion, my enteric motility, submucosal secretions. Did you know that your gut has gazillion neurons? The number of neurons in your gastrointestinal system is almost equal to the number of neurons in the entire spinal cord. Just think about that. What's the purpose of the nerve fibers that are attached to the heart then? To increase the rate or decrease the rate. Similarly, I can boost contraction or inhibit contraction of the gut. But make no mistake about it. The gut is able to initiate its contraction without help from outsiders. Your gut has its own brain. That's why I talk about your gut feelings. Ha ha. The pacemaker of the heart is the SA node. The pacemaker of your gut are the interstitial cells of Cajol. Let's look at the action potential of the SA node. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down as you studied in cardiology. Do you remember who was responsible for this depolarization or activation phase? The answer is calcium entry. That's right. Similarly, who's responsible for these spike potentials? For my gut contraction, the answer is also calcium influx. Calcium and some sodium. But this is totally different from the excitation of nerve fibers because depolarization in nerve fibers was caused by sodium entry, not calcium entry. Big difference. 
Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. For your gut, do you need autonomic or somatic? I need autonomic. Autonomic means automatic, which means involuntary. Autonomic is not just sympathetic and parasympathetic. It also includes the enteric nervous system, such as the myenteric for motility and the submucosal for secretion. Autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric. Sympathetic is thoracolumbar. It comes from all the thoracic vertebrae, as well as lumbar 1 and lumbar 2. Some textbooks will say 1, 2, and 3 lumbar. No one cares. T1, T2, T3, and T4 are going to head and neck and thorax, so we can skip them. We start from T5 all the way until T12 plus L1 and L2. All of them are going to the gut. Usually, they will relay in prevertebral ganglia, also known as collateral ganglia, which follow the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, inferior mesenteric artery. These sympathetic fibers are usually embedded inside the wall of these arteries so that we can pierce your intestines and stomach as few times as possible to decrease the spill of the gastric content to the outside. Please recall that the greater splanchnic nerve supplies the abdomen, but the lesser splanchnic nerve supplies the pelvis. That was the story of the sympathetic nervous system. The hero here is noradrenaline or norepinephrine. As for the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, it is craniosacral. Cranial nerves 1973. So cranial nerve number three, cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 9, and cranial nerve 10. So we have the oculomotor, the facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. Who is the hero of the gut? The vagus. The vagus supplies your entire gastrointestinal tract, except the upper part and the lower part. The uppermost part, which is around your mouth and tongue, is supplied by 7 and 9. The lowermost part is supplied by the pelvic nerve, also known as pelvic splanchnic nerve. Who is the hero here? Acetylcholine. Why do we need action potential? Because action potential is life. When your gut contracts, it's action potential. When your gut secretes, it's action potential. Your heart has electricity. You can measure it by ECG, electrocardiogram. Your brain has electricity. You can measure it by EEG, electroencephalogram. Your muscles have electricity. You can measure it by electromyogram, usually for skeletal muscles. As for the smooth muscles in your gut, you can measure their electricity by electrointestinogram. Again, please refer to this video where we talked about the types of membrane potential. During rest, you have the resting membrane potential. Upon activation, well, if you treat me with respect, enough threshold, I'll give you a robust action potential. Treat me with less respect, sub-threshold, I'll give you a local response or electrotonic potential. The exact same thing happens in the gut. It has resting membrane potential. If you give it enough threshold, it will give you spike potential, which is a true action potential. If you give it sub-threshold, it will give you slow wave potential, also known as basic electrical rhythm. Action potential in nerves. We have a resting membrane potential, and then when you activate me, boom, I go from negative to positive inside the nerve. And then as I get inactivated, repolarized, I go back to negative. And then when I overshoot, it's hyperpolarization. In nerve fibers, who is the hero during depolarization? Sodium entry. But in smooth muscle fibers in the gut, who is the hero during depolarization? Calcium entry. Calcium and some sodium. Treat me with respect, I'll give you an action potential, spike potential. Treat me with less respect, less than the threshold, I'll give you slow wave potential or basic electrical rhythm. Basic electrical rhythm is not a true action potential. Spike potential is a true action potential, which means that the slow wave potential will not cause your gut to contract. If you want your gut to contract, you need to talk to the spike potential. It's an actual action potential, which causes actual muscle contraction, thanks to actual calcium influx. Look at that. If you depolarize me during the spike potential, that's calcium influx. And then hyperpolarization back to normal. 
What's that humming in the background and it's not reaching the threshold? This is the slow wave potential or the basic electrical rhythm, which is not a true action potential. The true action potential is known as the spike potential. Pause and review. Please get a piece of paper and draw from scratch this basic table because in the next video we'll elaborate on the differences between slow wave potential and spike potential. I'll also tell you about the tonic or continuous contractions in your gut muscles. Quiz time! Why do we get tired after a big meal? If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you love graphs, I have tons of these in pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and you can download my general pharmacology course today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.